All right, yesterday, and now we're learning that this is the Devar Malchut, this is a speech given by the Lubavitcher Rebbe right in the end of 1991, Tafshin Nun Beit. <clears throat> Not long <clears throat> before he had a stroke, which rendered him um, half par paralyzed, he wasn't able to speak. So these are the last speeches that the Rebbe gave over to us. <clears throat> And he's giving us a very, very important and eternal and powerful, uh, a, a, how do you say it, a, a, an angles to look at the world from. So as, as usual, the Rebbe is trying to point out that we have to remember, remember all the time, and in fact, that's the main thing that should be on our mind, and that the world is not supposed to be the way it is now. The world is supposed to be totally different. There's tremendous potential for good inside of every human being and inside of every detail of the world that is not being expressed. And that's only because Mashiach is not here. <clears throat> and just like the Jews were in Egypt and they never thought they were going to get out and they really thought their identity was to be just abject slaves and to just you know make bricks all day and to make pyramids or sphinxes or whatever they did over there. And that's what a Jew was. And you would never dream that from a Jew would come like, uh, the, you know, people that did what God wants, bring blessings into the world, bring music into the world, harmony, the, 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 the new inventions, the physics. So this is a, no one would dream that anything could come out of a Jew except, you know, some maybe is a really good at making bricks, you know, and building, you can really make, you know, you want someone to make a nose for your sphinx. You know, take Rubenstein. He really knows. Except for that, there was no, they had no. There was no potential in the Jews. Nobody could see it. Came along Moshe, took the Jews out, and he revealed a tremendous potential of the Jews that they could actually serve God. They could make blessings in the world, <clears throat> etc. The problem is, <clears throat> the Jews left Egypt, but the Egypt didn't leave the Jews. So Mashiach is going to take the Egypt out of the Jews and the Egypt out of the whole world. What is Egypt? Egypt means physicality, limitation, using everything for your own purposes and not for the purposes of the creator of the universe, not improving the world. Except as so far that it makes it a little more pleasant for you, personally. I mean, so we can see, I hate to keep bringing this up, but you can see you know, what the result of this is. We just had, what's 80, 80 years ago, we had one of the most developed and intellectual and, and <clears throat> cultured uh, nations in the world, the Germany, and they, they just leashed, unleashed, you know, a destruction and and uh, on just innocent people, 50 million innocent people just killing people right and left. So we see that without a connection to something really meaningful, <clears throat> that all the potential of the world just goes into just the opposite way it's supposed to be. On the other hand, when real potential of the world of construction and of love and of value is in the world and we value all of God's creations then it's a different world but it, that's it's not that way so the Rebbe says good that depends on Mashiach just like the freeing, freeing of the Jews from Egypt depended on Moses as the freeing of all the potential of the world depends on the Mashiach and who's going to be Mashiach Mashiach will be somebody I mean, I think, I'm certain without any doubt that it's Lubavitch or Rebbe, but it'll be somebody exactly like, you don't want to take Lubavitch? Okay, whatever you say, but it'll be somebody exactly like him. And here we're learning <clears throat> the words of the Lubavitch or Rebbe, which there is nothing like that. You can search as much as you want, and you won't find it. So here he goes. So the Rebbe is saying, okay, we got this potential inside of us. How do we reveal it? We have to, re we have to do as much as we can. And we have to remember that these words are the words of the Mashiach. This is actually the Mashiach doing his job. Namely what? Lighting us up. Activating us. So the Rebbe is saying like this. Listen, we can see, we can get a good example of what potential is inside of us by the moon. See the moon. The moon is an example of potential being revealed. Why? Because the moon in the beginning of the month, it's, it's, it's like right before the beginning of the Jewish month, it's dark, there's no, nothing there. You don't even dream there is something there. All of a sudden, there's a little sliver. Oh, see, there's hope. 
there's hope. See that he, he, he didn't realize what was there. Huh? So you can't take the world for face at face value. <clears throat> the moon, all of a sudden, you thought the night was pure night. All of a sudden, you see a little sliver of the moon. What, what is that? What is that? A little bit of light. Up there. It doesn't light up anything. But you see that there's potential. There's hope. There's, there's the existence of hope, of good. A little bit of light. Right? Maybe the world can be good. Maybe the world can be good. And then it starts getting bigger and bigger. Ooh, ooh, it's getting bigger and bigger. Until finally the full moon is full. <clears throat> and then the whole night is, is illuminated. You can see. <clears throat> you can see on the nighttime. You ever been in a place where there's a full moon? You see. You can see. Not exactly like the daytime. It says in the future the night will be like the day. You'll be able to see. But then the moon starts getting going away and it gets darker and darker so if so we see that the, that's the maximum potential right when the moon gets bigger says the Rebbe no <clears throat> we see that as the moon gets letter, less and less the date of the month increases so when the moon is full it's the 15th of the month and then the moon starts waning and gets less and less that's the 16th of the month and the next day there's less light it's the 17th and finally, they're the end, near the end of the month, where there's just a little sliver. That's it. But right? it's just like, how do you say? It's death throes. There's no light left. That's the highest number of all. That's 2930. The, the reason for that is because, true, <clears throat> light is not revealed, but the essence is revealed. The essence is revealed. Not what the moon does, but what the moon is. There is a moon. And the moon <clears throat> is the ability to reflect God's light into the world. And that ability, that potential, in some ways is higher than what it actually does. <clears throat> huh? Let's take a let's take an example. Right? What is higher? Beethoven's music or Beethoven? Yeah, I mean, the music is I, uh, it's talking about, right? You sure? The music is just music. It's a bunch of sounds. You know, you put a bunch of sounds together. It's very beautiful, very this. But Beethoven was a human being. He was a person. You can say, eh, person, what's a big deal? Well, a person. If a person doesn't make music, it's not worth anything. Oh, really? That's that's really what you think? That's really what you think? That's sick. There's a very sick attitude in the world. That's the attitude of the Nazis. That's very sick. Every person is... In the image of God. That's what it says in the Bible. Every human being is made in the image of God. That's what God told Noah. Huh? Every human being is made in the image of God. And that was said 1,600 years after Adam ate from the tree and after the flood and after this. Every person is made in the image of God. So the music that comes from Beethoven or whoever it is, right? that's wonderful. That certainly is a revelation. But the person himself is the image of God. The music is not the image of God. The person himself. I, but you don't see there's so many people. What's the big deal? How many Beethovens are? Right? No big deal. So you say, yeah, you got a very good point. 100%. The, the, the purpose of a person is to produce, to, to improve the world. And he certainly improved the world with his music. No doubt about it. But that in no way takes away the value of what a human being is. It's just on a different scale. It's with different criterion. The criterion of beautiful music or whatever, that's what it does for us. But what a person is, that's what his relation with God is. He's in the image of God, every single person. <clears throat> if so, we come from that, that even a person that's mentally ill and he's who knows where, but he's made in the image of God, right? And that person is, is, is holy, is precious. You have to help the person. You have to. The, the, how is relating to us? We have to go. You can't give him a job as as a as a uh, you know brain surgeon, hundred percent, right? But on the other hand, something is there. His relationship to God is could be even is even more than us. The Rebbe once, it's a, it's a famous, uh, well known video that someone went in front of the Rebbe and he said he has a son that has uh, autism, and that he's already twenty three years old or something like that. And he as as asking the Rebbe for a blessing. So you shouldn't be autistic. So <clears throat> the Rebbe said, uh, he said, uh, you know, he's 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 uh, he's a uh, like oblivious to people. He doesn't talk to people. 
So the Rebbe says, it doesn't mean that he's oblivious. It doesn't mean that he can't talk. He, he's, he's very much aware, but he's aware of God more than we are. And he talks to God more than we do. He talks to God. And you could see the father was just, he was like smiling, you know, it's my son, you know, my son. He's close to God. No. He, <laughs> he's better than me. He's like proud of his son. That's the essence of the moon. That's the essence of the moon. Says the Rebbe, that's the essence of us also. And that's what's revealed in the last half of the month, that we can bring out what our essence is. And each moment we can say, the in and Z that this mood gosh beyoter to stress more, which says kaim is sura bashlim musa. The second half of the month, <clears throat> okay, the, the middle of the month it says kaim is sura bashlim musa. It says that the moon is full, and the full moon of the month of Kislev, that's when it's revealed to us, right? We see <clears throat> like the month of Kislev. Is the third month? <clears throat> the month of Kislev is the third month of the winter months. Hamakuv and the Chodesh Shlishi, and this corresponds to the third month of the summer months. What's the third month of the summer month? That's the month of Sivan when God gave the Torah. Yerchat Talitai, the third month. The Dugma. So this is. It corresponds to the third month of the winter, Kislev. This is the month where also the Torah was given, but the inside Torah, Yutit Kislev. Shu Rosh Hashanah, and this is the Rosh Hashanah of and Matan Torah, the giving of the Torah of Torah and Hasidus. Hasidut. What does this mean? Since the giving of the Torah was the day that God got married to the Jewish people, the Chatuna, the marriage day of God with the Jewish people, since this is only the marriage day, but the marriage was, will only be consummated with the Mashiach. But okay, that was the marriage day. God got married to the Jewish people. <clears throat> the beginning is the God. He was the giver. He was the mashpia. He was the, the, the groom. And the Jewish people, they're the receivers. They're the bride. But the ultimate purpose is that God and the Jewish people will be one. <clears throat> Not just the wedding day. Israel, that the, the Jewish people... They won't need to receive from God, so to speak. We won't be receivers. It will be revealed that the Jewish people and God are totally one. This is hinted at by the third month. That's what it says in the Torah, that we're the sons of God. Jewish, every single Jew. Like it's known, it's a shlishi, that what it says, the third month. This indicates that the joining of the upper and the lower. Number three, this is, shows that number one is the beginning, number three is the end, and there's number two, which joins them together. The third is, or sometimes they say number one is, the, is, is spiritual, number two is physical, number three joins them together. The upper, here we go. Now the upper is number one, the lower is number two, and number three unites them all together. According to this, we can say, that when the moon is full on the 14th and the 15th day of the month, and especially when it's the third month, this month of the giving of the Torah, the day when God got married to the Jews, right? This is the month we're talking about, Sivan. <clears throat> this mean becomes a uniting of the Jewish people with God. This then, the light of the moon will be like the light of the sun, the full moon. That the moon, which is the Jewish people, they won't have to receive any more from God. What does that mean? Because they themselves will be like God. <clears throat> this is the idea, Jewish people, and <clears throat> they're like the moon, and God are totally one. Right? And that sounds a little bit weird. But on the other hand, it, it, says in the, it does say in the Torah that we are the sons of God. When Moses went into Paro, God said, tell Paro, that let my sons go, that my b'ni b'chori, my sons, my chosen ones, the Jewish people, let them go. And later on, it also says, you know, don't make a mark on your flesh, where it says, b'ni matem l'ashem you are the sons, you Jewish people are the sons of God. So what does that mean? We're the sons of God. Huh? You got a whole religion, two and a half billion people are going berserk because one Jew said that he is the son of God. 
Right? So, but the fact is, every Jew is the son of God. So every the world, the world should go berserk over every single Jew. <clears throat> over me. But I'm not alone. There's how many other Jews are there in the world? 20 million Jews? Every single Jew is the son of God. That makes absolutely no sense, but it's true. It says in the Torah. <laughs> and everybody knows it. That, that no, nobody concealed it. Except maybe the Jewish people are trying to deny it. But the fact is, it's true. What does it mean? Who knows what it means? <laughs> Here the Rebbe is saying what it means. It means that every Jew has the ability to reveal God in the world. Huh? Jews and God are totally one. Even deeper, Mood Gashenyan, they stress this thing of this is stressed when the moon is full of the month of Kislev. Not the month, that's Sivan, the month of Kislev, especially because this is the month of the of the winter months. This is even more than it is in the month of Sivan, when the revealed Torah was given. Hachi, look, the difference between the month of the summer and the months of the winter, then in the months of the summer, like Sivan, when we received the the Torah on Mount Sinai, there shines, in the summer, there shines light, and it's warm. You see the moon. And the moon is, and, and you see the sun. I'm sorry, the sun. And the sun shines even more, but toke of Begilo Yoter, <clears throat> with more power and with more revelation than it is in the winter months. Shekaya to Muzmanachom, that the summer is the time of heat. And the days, like it says, Be'er Kro Elohim, and the days are longer. In the summer, the days are longer than the night. And in the winter, it's exactly the opposite. In the winter, it's cold. And the nights are longer than the days. And the main thing of <clears throat> all of the lands, right? The, Iker, the main thing is in the center of the whole world, which is the Holy Land, Israel, the Enyan Baboda, in the months of the <clears throat> summer months and the months of the winter, you know, like you go down to Australia and places like that, it's exactly the opposite. But where is it that the, <clears throat> the in the summer, the days are longer, especially in the land of Israel? And it's colder, days of Israel. The Shemesh Avaya, the, the sun, the illuminator, God, this is <clears throat> God, what God gives from above to below, which is not the case in the months of the winter. In the winter, the sun is not so dominant, mainly is the work of the moon from below to above. <clears throat> we have to provide the warmth in the winter. Therefore, when there is the situation of the moon is full in the summer months, cave and she'ikro, since the main thing is because of the revelation of God, which God is like the sun, and this, that's no big novelty. <clears throat> in the summer months, it's already light most of the time. So if the moon becomes full and it becomes light, it's a, a very nice, but that's not a, such a big novelty. It's not so much because of what the Jews do. It's because of what God made. That's, so to speak, nature. So therefore, in you can still feel a little bit the difference between Mashpia, the sun, and the moon. <clears throat> In the summer months, the summer months, every day is the giver, God, the sun, is revealing. Right, the main thing is what God does. But Mela, so therefore, it's the, the, when the moon is full. Why is it full? Because you can see that it's receiving from the the sun. The moon is receiving from the sun, because the main emphasis in the summer months is the sun. <clears throat> but when the moon is full in the winter months. Even since Sheikro, because the main thing is the service of the Jewish people, the moon, because the main emphasis in the winter months is darkness. So it's a big novelty when the night, which is even more dark, <clears throat> is a full moon. This really stresses the completion of the wedding, Matan Torah. She'ain zeb open shell mashpi of a The main thing of the wedding is. It's just not just that the groom does everything. It says in the Jewish weddings, the bride is silent. <clears throat> Under the wedding canopy, the bride is silent. That the receiver becomes like the giver. That's really true unity. The moon becomes like the sun. 
in the winter months, what happens? The moon becomes full. It means that the moon is sort of doing the job which the sun is not doing. In the, in the winter months, there's very little sun and it's very dark and cold. And when the moon lights up in the middle of the winter, that's sort of, in the, in the winter nights, that's sort of an unusual thing because the dominant force in the winter is dark. And when there's, the dark becomes light, so that shows that the receiver, namely the moon, is becoming the giver. It's lighting up the darkness. Yisrael, that's a sign of the Jewish people and God become one. And we can also add on that this is also hinted at in the name of Kislev. And Kislev, is, that's the, unit, the third month of the winter. <clears throat> Okay, well, let's, let's, let's just let's not get too involved in just the words. Let's what's the Rebbe trying to say? <clears throat> when there is darkness, when there are difficulties, when life is not smiling at us, and <clears throat> things are not going exactly the way we would have liked. So a person can give up. <clears throat> and he can just surrender to the darkness which is a very easy thing to do. The world is a very dark place. And what does it mean, darkness? When you're in a dark room, you can only see yourself. You only feel yourself. You don't see anything. Only you see yourself. And all these fears start setting in. There's nothing good. That's darkness. So a little bit of darkness can bring a lot of darkness. <clears throat> a person just sort of loses hope. When your person's in a dark room, if it's really totally black, it gets to the point where he's like paralyzed. He just doesn't want to move. He doesn't know where he is. He doesn't know what's in front of him. Where... So the same thing in darkness we can become. So the, that's what the Rebbe is saying. <clears throat> now we're in the exile. Things are dark. Things are not the way we switched it. And things seem to be getting darker. And they're cold. And there's very, very little light, even in the daytime. And when it is, it's not warm. So a person could think, this is the way it's going to keep being. There, there's, there's no, there's no, there's no chance. I'm finished. The end of the line. So says the Rebbe. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Exactly the opposite. The boss over here is God, and God makes the world sometimes lighter, sometimes darker. When it's darkest, <clears throat> and then we take it on ourselves to produce the light. And we don't rely on God to make the light like it is in the in the in the summer. It says that's the big novelty. That's why God created the world. That's what God really is after. It says that will cause the future when the moon will be like the sun, when everyone will see God in the world, every through every Jew. And what does that mean? That every Jew is going to be God and not everybody else? Exactly the opposite. Who's creating the whole world? God, he's creating everything from love. Every Jew will be an example of that. It'll be, uh, how do you say, a road sign saying you are now in the world of love, of God's love, right? What's, what's the proof? Me, I'm the proof, right? You look at a Jew, you say, whoa, this is something else. This is something else, right? Instead of looking at a person thinking, what can I get from him, right? Looking at a human, what can I get from this person? What? What's he going to do for me? Well, how can I, right? The used person, exactly the opposite. You'll think, wow, what can I get from myself? What can I give to the creator of the universe? That's the idea of kislev. Kislev is case being covered, lamed vav. Case means covered, helem, concealment. And lamed vav, <clears throat> this is the number 36. We talked about this last week, the week before also. 36, this is the gematria of Ele. This shows on Revelation. <clears throat> shisha Pamir Shisha. <clears throat> six, six times six. Chibur joining both of them in one word, Kislev. This indicates at when it's joined together, covering and revealing. Right, Lam above means <clears throat> Ela, re revelation. Ela means these. When you join them together, this is can this is joining concealment and revelation, namely that the essence which this is. The essence by God, which is which is the, the, the essence, the fact that there is God, the fact that there can be good, this comes revealed. Kevin ends up, this is not in a way of 
Mashpia Makabla. It's not a way of giver and receiver. It's just what is is revealed. <clears throat> and this is especially stressed in the holiday, which is at the end of this month. Chanukah. In Chanukah, <clears throat> even though it's the end of the month and it's the only holiday in Judaism that comes in the end of the month, after the middle, except we're we'll talking about Yudet Kislev in a second, but Chanukah, which is the 25th day of the Jewish month, when the moon is almost gone, Kisha or Lavana, when the light of the moon is going and getting smaller and smaller every day, is Mood Gashko, then we can, now it's really stressed the revelation of adding, being bigger and bigger. Why? First of all, the date gets bigger. But secondly, when you light the candles of Hanukkah, how do you light? The first night you light one. After that, you light more, two, three. From day to day, there's more and more light. We're making more and more light as the moon gets smaller and smaller, less light. And it's in the winter also. It gets colder and darker, and we're making more light. Shabazan, Mudgash. Now we can stress that the mute, the or, that the, the lessening, the subtraction of light of the moon, Eno Ella, it's just lessening the love, the, how do you say, the, 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 the uh, category of light. And the, the category of light, a ray of light becomes less and less because it's coming like the moon. It gets closer and closer to the sun. The moon is closer to the sun. That's why the, our light that we get is less. But lo mute but it's not any limit. It's not subtracting from the revelation of the moon itself. Shari miyom liyom, from day to day, holichom meir yoter yoter. Every day gets more and more light. How, first of all, the date gets more. And we stress this, especially in Hanukkah. First day, one light. Second day two, third day three. It continues and it gets. This is what revealing, not just revealed light, not just a ray of light, but it's revealing the essence of light. Like we're going to say, because really, what was the whole miracle of Hanukkah? Self sacrifice. The Jews did things only because they're Jews, only because they're God's people. <clears throat> the Rebbe has a, has a sicha, a speech about it, but he says that almost all of the Jews agreed with the Greeks. The Greeks did not destroy the temple. The Greeks were very civilized and cultured people. And they were considerate as far as it benefited them. And they did not destroy the temple and they did not destroy the candelabra, the, the menorah, and they didn't even pour out all the oil. They left all the oil there. The Jews could have lit the oil. And the, the Greeks wanted them to light the oil, but it was defiled. The Greeks opened up every bottle. Oh, they touched every bottle, moved every bottle. In any case, the, 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 the Greeks defiled the oil, defiled the oil, defiled the oil as the same smell and the same appearance and the same, how do you say, burning power as undefiled oil, pure oil and defiled oil practically are the exact same thing. There's no, you can know, there's no way you can tell the difference. Huh? Can't tell the difference. Just like, you know, physically, you can't tell the difference between Shabbos and Tuesday. There's no scientific way you can tell the difference whatsoever. <clears throat> as far as I know, I mean, there's these guys with the DNA stuff. There's no way physically you can tell the difference between a Jew and a non-Jew. Same thing. With the... But the fact of the matter is, though, is that Jews are called the sons of God, and the rest of the world are creations of God. And God loves his creations, his handiwork. <clears throat> but creation of God is separate from God. And a son of God is not separate. He, he's, he's, the, he's the continuation of his father. But that's the essence of a Jew. It's not the revelation of the Jew. Right? The revelation of the Jew. The, the, the revelation of a Jew. We're like everybody else. We're like the Greeks. We're worse than the Greeks. The Greeks took over the world. The Greeks brought all this the philosophy and, and, and the art and music and, and sports and things like that that the Jews didn't have at all. Right, the Jews had sports, whatever sports <clears throat> the Jews had. <clears throat> all of a sudden, they brought all these wonderful things. The Greeks, the, 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 the Jews loved it. And not only that, the Greeks said, hey, we're not trying to make you be like us. We just, you know, do whatever you want. Do your thing. You know, you can go to the temple. You can light the candles. Like that. It was just a handful of fanatics 
And they said, hey, we're Jews. You know, well, what do you get out of it? What do you get politically? What do you, you know, and the Greeks conquered the whole world politically. What's your point? What, what do you get out of it? We get truth. That's what we get, right? They had, they had absolutely no obligation whatsoever to fight against the Greeks. There was no obligation. And there were some opinions that said the Greeks took the Jewish women, they raped, I don't know. Anyway, according to many opinions, they, they, they could have been that they enticed them. And said, However, it is 99% of the Jews, and a lot of them were very, very big rabbis and very genius people, they found a way to excuse everything that they did. Only a handful of people they with, were willing to risk their lives that it has to be pure oil. And they went and here they had to risk their lives. It wasn't you got in a, you know, you put bombs around, you got a machine gun. You had to go individually and face to face fight all these people. They had, you know, maybe they had bows and arrows, but except for that, they know how, how far away can you shoot an arrow? You know, you shoot it, I don't know, 100 feet, 200 feet, something like that. <clears throat> but you can, there's no such thing you can, you know, you have to do it one at a time. There's only one arrow at a time, you know. <laughs> and that's what they had to do. They had to fight with them hand to hand combat. And it says that there were how many were 13, 13 Maccabees against thousands, as the Rashi says, tens of thousands, Rabavot <clears throat> of enemies. How could they win them? How could they even start? Good, maybe when they started, other Jews joined with them. But the point of the matter is the whole thing of Hanukkah is self-sacrifice, is shining out the etzim, the essence of what a Jew is, the essence of what God is. God wants us <clears throat> to turn to him. Uh, and if necessary, to sacrifice and not to be selfish and that is represented by the darkness of the end of the month and the light which is lit in Hanukkah as we will continue and God willing tomorrow have a good oh yom yom one second one, one minute one minute eh. here we go We have a tradition that, that came from the Baal Shem Tov that when you hear someone saying something bad about another Jew, even if you don't know who the person he's talking about, you should feel bad. Right? I hear somebody saying that Shmerel Groys is a liar and a cheater and a disgusting. It should make me feel bad. Why? Because one of the things is wrong. If what they're saying a person is true, then the person that they're saying about something's wrong with him. A Jew that has a defect should make me feel bad. If it's not true, then the person who's saying it, he's not good. In any case, it's not good to have not good in the world. So try as much as possible to only say good things about people. And if you have something bad to say about, about someone, don't say it, unless it's practical. This is practical, right? Someone comes to you and say, hey, it says, hey, uh, Schmerl Gross wants to borrow $20,000 from me. Can I loan it to him? Don't do it. Why not? Listen, I had an experience with him. He's not a straight person. You can't loan to him. <clears throat> no, that's it. That's permissible. That's permissible. You can save a person, you can save. But you can't say more than is necessary. You can't say more than is necessary. You can't say not only that, but he also beats his wife, and he also this, that you can't say. Ad hominem, like it says, <clears throat> arguments are not good ones. Only say good things about people, and you'll bring out the good in everybody. Have a good day with Mashiach now. God willing, three o'clock, we'll continue learning about uh, Yutet Kislev in the Sicha of the Rebbe from Chelek Aleph. Shalom Bracha. Thank you for coming. <clears throat>